Hello, my name is Edwin Rutsch and I'm the director of the Empathy Center located here in beautiful Santa Barbara, California. The center's mission is to build the empathy movement and to raise the level of empathy in society through education and community building initiatives. And my name is Anita Novak. I teach at McGill University and I'm the author of Purposeful Empathy, a book that invites readers to turn up the volume of empathy in their lives. And at the beginning of 2024, Anita and I co-hosted the Empathy Summit uh, brought to you by the Empathy Center and more than 40 authors of books about empathy participated. They shared what their book was about, why they were motivated to write it, and what they hope readers will take away. Thank you so much for watching, and we hope you'll buy their book. And we're gonna move on to our next one, which is Lynn Asarchi. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct as well. Uh, and how, how do you pronounce it? <laughs> Azar Key. Azar Key. Thank you very much. Challenging. We're going to have to, yeah, you. we're going to have to do the It's close here. enough. It, it's close enough. Okay. So, and anyway, you are the founder and executive director of Kids Bridge Youth Center, and uh, you're the author of The Empathy Advantage and Coaching Children to Be Kind, Respectful, and Successful. So the floor is yours, uh, Lynn. Thank, Thank you. you so much. So a shout out to Anita and Edwin. This is such a huge lift. Um, sometimes it's isolating to be in this space, especially in um, the youth area. So let's see, here we are. And can everybody see this? Great. And let's see, how do I get rid of the side? Make that bigger. All right. Um, how do I get rid of the left side? I did this before. Can everyone see my screen? Uh, yes, see it. Click on slideshow and it will take over. Slideshow. Upper uh, bar, upper level, upper. Yeah. Oh, there the it right. is. There it's right. I forgot from beginning. Yep. Uh oh. Okay. All right. Technology, Eureka. Okay, so thank you everybody for, for being in this empathy milieu. Again, isolating is nice to be with other people. So what the world needs now, I'll let everybody fill in the blank for that. Um, I hope it's all the same answer. I am Lynn Azarki for 21 years, director and founder of Kids Bridge Youth Center, looking around and not seeing enough people teaching social emotional skills. For 21 years, I have taught with a wonderful staff, 35,000 kids from preschool to middle school. My focus is social emotional skills. And of course that includes empathy. So my lens, like all of your lenses is really empathy. So question, let's be interactive. What will the world look like in 20 or 30 years? And we're all doing work with adults and some of us with children. In your mind, and you can put it in the chat or answer yourselves, are we going to be a more empathetic society, less empathetic, or the same amount? And I'm hoping to answer some of your, your theories as we go through my presentation. But let's first start with empathy. So 20 years ago, working with children and active listening, listening to children, I'm wondering where is the research? And as you guys know, there is really not a lot of research. So compared to our generation, let's pretend we're all the same age, is empathy increasing, decreasing, flat, and why? And I think last week someone uh, found the research and there's not a lot. And this research is by Dr. Sarah Conrath from the University of Michigan and empathy is decreasing for these college students and perspective taking is also decreasing. I also found some research um, of, from high schools that empathy is decreasing. You can imagine if this is happening with social media increasing that for middle schoolers and elementary school kids, uh, we should be quite concerned. So we, we listen to kids. So I have the pulse of kids uh, in Kidsbridge and how are kids feeling today? So I don't have to read it. You know how kids are challenged especially after COVID, uh, it's even more challenging. COVID has really created more anxiety and stress. 
So what is Kidsbridge? And I need so that you will understand my book, I have to start first with my work. So we create, this is my mission statement, empathetic individuals and caring citizens that we start with the kids, remember preschool to middle school. And this is what we work on with the lens of empathy, bullying prevention, empathy and empowerment, of course, anti-bias, anti-racism. We've been doing for 17, 18 years, Anti-bias, anti-racism used to be called diversity appreciation, but now we can really say what it is, of course. And of course, pro-social life skills training. Since 2002, I have been obsessed with empathy. Um, in Kidsbridge, we have small group discussions. Remember, kids are listening to other kids, as same for adults, preschool through middle school, I said before, we are evidence-based. Evidence-based for your pre and post surveys and we analyze them. Here is a list of all the things we do. I'm not going to read it. And you see empathy empowerment is a well-respected um, activity that we do in the center. We go into classrooms. And of course, with COVID, we started uh, Zooming. I have listened to 35,000 kids, teachers, parents, counselors, and grandparents in my work. And this is my conclusion. Empathy is job one. Empathy is the intersections for all the social emotional skills for face to face. And again, you can read these different intersecting words. For me, empathy is the core, is job one, and it's the place to start. Why do kids need more empathy? It is the foundation for all social emotional skills to walk in the shoes of others. And I love that new thing I learned today. Got to take your shoes off first and park them. And someone else said, you have to find them, which is so cute. To ameliorate anxiety, stress, and trauma. This is rising for our children, I think all over the world. To reduce hate, bias, discrimination, and racism. Empathy is a wonderful intersection. And empathy opens up our hearts to do community service, to role model that for our kids, but also to have our kids do community service. Empathy, strategically, is for our democracy, for our kids, and for other people's kids. Empathy is job one. I don't need to convince you. So having this epiphany 17 years ago, this is one book. On the left is the hardback. On the right is the paperback. Empathy, coaching children and students to be kind, respectful, and successful. Who can argue with that? So from Dr. Simon Baron Cohen um, at Cambridge, when I started doing my research, I see that um, we're born with different amounts of empathy. No, we're not born with the same. Some are low, some are medium or high. And as we've all talked about today and last week and probably next week, we can increase this. We can increase the amount that we are um, born with. So 18 years ago, I say, okay, we can increase empathy. And I'm in a, an academic environment in the College of New Jersey, of New Jersey. And I was told by the professors, no, you're born with what you're born with. You cannot increase empathy. So I took the dare and started teaching empathy. Our work is statistically significant, measured, evaluated, and assessed to have improvements in empathy and some other important things. Stereotype knowledge, mindfulness, moral reasoning, which leads into empathy, empowerment, not enough to have empathy, we have to act, and the golden rule, religious diversity, so important today, and reporting cyberbullying. So here is another example of what empathy in the youth milieu, this is how, what empathy helps with, and I'll let you read that. Being an upstander. I'll talk about briefly. So my empathy scaffold is um, start with yourself. And we heard this again today. Start with yourself. Self-compassion. There's a lot of good work out there. Self-compassion. And kids need to learn self-compassion to take care of themselves in a world of social media, in a world of bullying, in a world of mean. Empathy for others. And then finally, empathic action. If we're empathetic and we're learning empathy and our kids are learning empathy, it's great, but it's not good enough. We need to teach children how to have empathy for others. One so minute. in my oh, one minute. Okay. 
So this is a quote by Maya Angelou. It's not enough to have it. We have to display it. Um, at KidsBridge, we do skits and scenarios. Kids practice, practice, practice the challenges of exclusion, bullying, and stereotypes. Um, running out of time, my book teaches developmentally how to start teaching empathy when kids are under three. And it goes through middle school and high school. I take this age by age, the intersection of pets and empathy, bullying, and these things. So three things I want to leave you with. If we don't paradigm shift to teach our children empathy, I'm afraid in 20 or 30 years, we're not going to be where we want to be. We all prize empathy. We have to start teaching our children now. Media literacy intersex is very important. And finally, begging you guys, we need more research, especially for kids. We need more research to understand empathy, to understand empathic action, being an upstander. I look around, there's not enough. We need to do more research in the children, teens area. I thank you for caring about the kids. And I yield back to Edwin. And if you'll stop to share. Yep, there we go. Yeah, thank you so much. It's so important that we teach empathy in the schools. I'm hoping that we can have empathy circles, the practice taught in every school in the country and the world for that. And that's actually one of our, our goals. And uh, hope we can keep collaborating uh, in, in getting empathy into the schools. And, and so thank you for that presentation. It's so important.